just so, want to pitch in on, uh, you know, see, we've heard a word very frequently. If I have to just do a word cloud so far, one word which came very frequently was consistency, right? I just want to ask you a question. Can you remember a brand which is more than 100 years old? 200 years old? 300 years old? Which is the oldest brand? Absolutely. Somebody said. Right? Now the question is, the biggest brand in the world are the religions. If you just look at it, religion has been there for decades. So what can we learn from them? If you just look at it, they did something, you know, you know, your father said something to you, your grandfather said something to you. They passed on something. What did they pass on? They passed on a story. So they consistently told us stories. Have they changed the story of uh, any of the, uh, you know, Puranas, whether it is Hindu or the Christian or any religion you take for that matter, there is a consistency of the story which has been told. I think it's super important that whatever you do needs to be very, very consistent. But while I said that, I also want to, you know, talk about uh, some of the key shifts which are happening. We talk about, you know, what is changing in the last five years, but what has not changed for decades is storytelling. But what is changing is, uh, one is, are you selling products? Because I think we need said product is the hero. Are you going to sell products as products? or products as something else. When you go for vacation, when you come back, we all buy something and we put it on the fridge. What is that? Fridge magnet, right? So for you remembered that location that you visited, you, you actually did not buy a product or did not buy a service, you bought a memento. For when somebody visits your store, what memory are they carrying back? Are you selling products or are you selling memento? For storytelling, selling mementos is one, and third is, you need to be absolutely relevant. When people say consistent, I think I go with uh, you in terms of you need to be consistent and you also need to stay relevant. In this information explosion space, how do you stay relevant? Today, consumers know far better than brands. In fact, consumers are ahead of brands. We are all doing a catch-up game. How do you play a catch-up game? Right? Now, millions of consumers, what do they want today? Expertise is limited. So we can't assume that we know it all. That's where I think I bring in the role of data, role of technology, right? If you really don't use data and technology to understand what consumers are actually doing, we will not be relevant. I think super important is that. And uh, I would summarize all of that and say a simple formula of everything so far has been said is, just remember A, 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 A cube. It is all about awareness, access, and availability. Right? Retail is all about availability. You need to have access, which means channels, and you need to create awareness. You can't be on top of mind of people if you have not been consistent and if you are not telling a story very, very consistently. Ganesh, hold on to the mic. And, you know, we talk about technological advances, right? Everybody today, you know, on one hand, people talk about omni-channel, which is the next big thing. People talk about uh, AI and predictive analytics. And, you know, of course, data is helping you understand your customer better. But for a brand, really, when, you know, when somebody's strategizing their brand, really, what is really the way to optimize the use of data, um, uh, you know, to ensure that, that, that data is used smartly and, and not just because there's lots of data, you should be using all the data? So, you know, many a times, I, I'm not sure, you know, just show of hands, you know, just to also keep us moving. How many of you heard machine learning or AI since morning multiple times? fair amount, right? So my first pointer there is, you know, don't get driven away by the hype. For future of retail or future of brand is not about technology. It's about, I would call it anthropology, which means that what are you using technology for? To understand this human being, right? So to understand this human being, when you are a small stone owner in the corner, you don't need any technology. You actually know 50 people come, you know by their name, you know where they live, when they do what they do, right? You don't need any technology. When do you really need technology is to replicate that service of that corner shop, the grocery shop in the corner, when you have 500 stores. How do you have the same pulse of every consumer like that corner shop? For you need to collect data. For the first thing to understand consumer is, are you collecting data at every touch point? 
Second question, before you start collecting more data, question is, what you are doing with the data that you already have? For we see, because we, we operate in that space, we see a huge possibility of what you're already doing, a lot can be done. Second is to say that how can I convert, right? And how can I gather more interaction and data? And when you have a lot of data, how do you make sense? For technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning helps you. Now, I think uh, leaving all the hype about what does that mean in a simple terms is, if you have a small ch child at, uh, in your house, Let's say if the child is holding a table, what does the mother say? Don't fall, Papa, this is a uh, table, or this is chair, right? And two, three times you say this, the kid picks up the language that this is chair, or this is table. For machine learning is all about throw a lot of data at machine and teach the machine what it is. For it can recognize your face, it can recognize a table, it can recognize a furniture, and that's how the machine learns. And if you throw a lot of data, it can start to then predict. For you give a situation which has not seen before, it starts to predict and how do, how do we use that technology to help brands and retailers is that particularly fashion business is pretty complex things are changing so much on the front end and uh, you know and the challenge of the business is to predict what product will sell one year from now and uh, that accuracy globally is one out of two products don't sell well which is almost like a coin toss right people might ask why do we need experts for a coin toss kind of a business but the question is, if the experts are not there, this won't be coin toss at all, right? It'll be further lower. So it's extremely challenging. We work with our partners to collect all the data globally across all interfaces, plus their clients' data. And we come out with, you know, what trend will do well and what's the probability of success. The kind of metrics that we are seeing is forecast accuracy goes up anywhere between 20 to 40% uh, when you use technology to make prediction. Having said that, will it be absolutely accurate? No. It takes you from this level to the next level. And that's where data helps. For Steve, my, Steve. Sorry. Yeah, but I, say, I just want to you know, complete by saying that you know, uh, very, very important is collecting data and using data. And AI or machine learning is not a technology functions job. I just want to make that absolutely clear. Your store manager, you are warehouse shipper, warehouse picker, everybody contributes to data. So data as a culture is very, very important if you want to use any of the technology which incorporates data. Steve, do you want to come in on this, on leverage, leveraging data and analytics to really help you derive your brand building strategy? Uh, yeah, I was going to start by saying, does this AI stuff work? It does. You tell me, yeah, you run does. IBM, so. Well, no, that's why I said it. Um, the reality it does, um, but I think, you know, it's almost like digital dabbling. I, I think you have to be more, at this point, the stuff works, but people, clients need, companies need to be purposeful. And, and, and it's just to this point, it's not about this technology. It's, it's about how do you use it? And some of it's, not very exciting. It's like operational and can drive some real operational improvement. Uh, some of it can be with the customer. Some of it can be with the associate. Um, by the way, uh, you, you must have looked at my presentation because one of the things I talk about is one of the great powers of this technology, and by the way, I believe it actually starts with just good math before we even get into artificial intelligence. So I think it starts with using the data you have and doing good analytics. Uh, just start with math, um, but it starts with how do we go back to the days when there was a, a sole proprietor? And by the way, I think the sole proprietor knew two things. They knew their customers, but they knew their neighborhood. And you actually just touched on both of those things. And those are two very different things. And so as you start to look and say, how can I use data? And, and by the way, data about customers and personalization, we've spent a ton of time in this industry talking about, I'm not sure we've done a good, very good job executing. We actually spend very little time talking about what, I, what we're now calling hyper-local data, data around the neighborhood, events, weather, in demographics, activities, um, biz, business economics, you know, rents, all kinds of things like that, um, and how they affect uh, trends and demand and, and, and lots of other factors in the industry. So uh, 
But all of it needs to be purposeful. And I think in a lot of companies, there's sort of little skunk works activities going on all over instead of some purposeful, here's a few things that could make a big difference in our company. Let's start with those few things. Let's see if they make a big difference. Few of them will, we'll fail fast on a few, and let's, let's start building from there. Um, and, and that's the way to do it. I'll add to that, uh, to what, what Steve just highlighted, right? I think uh, what's really critical here to understand is that there is a lot of availability of data, but are we really using it in the right fashion to fix the right problems? You can really drive a lot of very insightful analytics, but really understanding that everything that is being driven is it doable. And figuring out what is doable changes the whole nature of the insights uh, we are deriving. It's, it's pointless to talk about and really getting that intelligence that is not implementable today, right? So that's where uh, our take on that whole aspect that data has to be analyzed from a very holistic perspective, right? The store manager also has to get a control of it, has to get the access to it, because unless he starts taking the right decisions at the right time, this, it, that whole data is not actionable and is pointless. So I think building that layer and making sure it's unanimously accessible right from the leadership, right from the CEO to the store manager is what the most point uh, while working with data would be. Right. Uh, on one hand, we talk about, you know, of course, external stakeholders like customers really driving brand value, right? And, and I know we need to touch upon this that, you know, operational efficiency, service efficiency is very critical to really driving that consistency in that message. Vineet, can you shed some light and some examples on how you've achieved it uh, to, to ensure that that branding message remains consistent even though it's happening on the back end? So I think, uh, as I said earlier also, it's about the brand promise. Uh, and as a brand promise, product is one promise, the customer service is the other promise, the experience, uh, uh, relevance, all these are promises you make. And I think uh, uh, our, our big focus, and especially for our case, is the experience consumers get in store. Uh, we are a fast fashion retailer, uh, and majority of the fast fashion retailer purely focus on the product part of it and not the experience part of it or the consumer handling part of it. We've taken a different stand and we say we take pride in consumer services which we provide. And I think uh, that's where it's about training your people because end of the day, your brand promise is not a poster uh, or a brand label on, on the product. It's the overall journey the consumer gets. All the touch points he or she is engaging right from an internet search where the relevant product is available or the information is available to the store, where they engage with the, where the uh, ever employees or our staff is engaging. Uh, right supply from, chain, inventory. Uh, see, I'll say, yeah, it, see, everything has to, so those are back end which the consumer has. The, what consumer is feeling through the entire thing is availability. The staff's available, uh, staff be, uh, be able to service them right. And I think that's the big part of the experience and that's why by consumers go to on, offline. You go there because you are able to engage with another human. I think all human by nature want to engage uh, and that's what online doesn't allow you to today. And that's where people want to go back to the shops. Uh, I think when we're having lunch, you said, for me, it's far better to pop into the store at Linking Road because it's right up there. But if you're not going to get the service or the brand promise, you will say, okay, fine. The ease is still there online. I'd rather go and buy it. And today, especially with the choices we give to consumers in India with cash on delivery and stuff like this and 100% returns in 30 days or something, you better buy online, but you go to there because you are able to engage with an employee or a person who is able to then have a dialogue, understand your need, and then be able to. Uh, so I think there's a purpose for a retail, and I think that happens through employees uh, having the right culture. They need to understand and embody the brand values, uh, though it's not an easy job, and I will not say that we've been able to do it to the perfect say. It's, it's, it's a journey, and we are still trying. Uh, but we spend a lot of time training our people on product. Uh, and especially with our product because the product is changing so fast. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a key part of hiring right. And I think, uh, I think as you said, when you decide what your brand is, like you decided innovation, I think we sh must not forget the people part of it. Yeah, they are the essence, whether it's your buyer, uh, it's your service staff, or it's your, it's your delivery person who's going to the, store, to, the, uh, to the house. It's so many touch points. And, and one part of that, end of the day, we'll land up at loyalty, uh, the loyalty programs. Now, 
I think uh, that's also a large part of the brand, uh, though we don't do it. Uh, I'm not a big believer in it, uh, but uh, I think a lot of brands do it and it suits them. Uh, but that also should stand for the brand and not do it because hundred other people are doing it. I think so. these are all part of creating the brand and over years, as I said, consistency of this creates a brand and that becomes your brand promise because you don't write a charter of brand promises on a store. Right? It's the experience you are getting consistently or not getting consistently, which is creating your brand. Right. So employee engagement is just as important in creating that customer experience as it yeah, is. Especially in India where the churn rate is 50%, yeah. uh, I, I think uh, the only effort employee, if I think P CEOs and others should do is ensuring people stay and you are able to train them well. Uh, I think money is one part, but I think it's the experience the employee himself or herself is facing in the store. Uh, we don't give uniforms to our staff. Yeah. We don't give it because we want them to experience the product. Uh, because if they are able to experience the product, they're able to sell that product. Uh, so it's different com companies will have different brands, will have different value systems, that's fine. But that's core belief of ours in people. Uh, and we very proudly say we are in people business and not product business, uh, because end of the day, it's people which is customer and it's people in our stores. Adish? Well, operational efficiency, this is a very, very interesting you know, subject to talk. I think this is the key for a successful retail. If you do not have operational efficiency, now that can be in the supply chain or that can be at the POS. I think uh, most of us must be struggling, you know, uh, from the fact that we are carrying inventories in our stores. It can lead up to two months, three months, four months, six months, depending on the product category you're into. Apparels and shoes particularly, they are sometime up to six months of the inventory. Now you don't know as the consumer trend is changing, the online, offline concept is changing, you never know what is the inventory value, real value of that product in the store. Now, there is a, there is a special uh, you know, a drive which we did in Liberty. Uh, it took us five years to do because we are manufacturer-led you know, retail is to you know, implement theory of constraint. Now, theory of constraint is that you change your business model from push to pull. Most importantly, we all work on push models, but at gone are those days. Pull means that you are adaptive to the changes in the marketplace and the consumer. Whatever is the demand of the consumer, whatever you are sold today, if you are able to produce the next day, that means your supply chain will be the fastest and you're able to replenish. So four principles of uh, you know, this theory of constraint was replenishment. Are you able to replenish your product within one day, two days, seven days? But if your replenishment is 30 days or 60 or 90 days, that means for sure your retail will fail one day. And the second is the ROI, the return on investment. You may pump in a lot of you know, goods into you know, your supply chain through your distributors, channel partners, and you are imagining that your goods are sold. Actually, it's not. Because they're just transferred from your warehouse to somebody's warehouse. It has not reached the feet or uh, you know, the body of the consumer. So importantly, the second part is the ROI. If there is a break in the chain of ROI of any partner, eventually that retail will not be successful. So the two major elements, uh, b besides the reach and range and you know, uh, uh, expansion of channel, the two key elements are number one is the replenishment. So instead of push, you have to work on pull model. That means your manufacturing led retail should be adapted to the consumer changes or the needs. And secondly is the ROI, that you must promise ROI, not that you give schemes, you give gold, you give loyalties, you give a lot of promises, which are more monetary in value, but in the end, you are disturbing the supply chain or the operational efficiency. So I think these are the two key thoughts I would like to leave with you. Radish? So just would like, would like to add here, uh, see when, you, when we talk about operational efficiencies for any retailer, I think the most important thing is to go back to the roots. We keep talking about technology, we keep talking about a uh, lot of new things, technology and a lot of new things. But what we have experienced that the moment you start working on your roots, how a retailer must work, the operational efficiencies start coming back. So I give you my example, our example, our company's example. This year, we worked, on, apart from a lot of other things, we worked on two things very, very strongly. One is to train our staff to give enhanced customer service. That is the basic root of the retail. And the second is supply chain. These two things have delivered very high double-digit growth to us in this year on same stores concept basis. So in my opinion, when we talk about operational efficiencies, working on routes, go back to the basics. That is the most important factor. So I think 
uh, if you look at the relevance of the topic is brand, okay, and brand building. Customer does not care how efficient you run your store. For them, the efficiency is what I need, is it available? And I think that's where it's so important to use data. Uh, I, I like, I definitely agree to the pull model, but I'm a push guy because of fast fashion. Uh, though, had, could, if I could the business model, I would have changed to pull. Uh, but I think that's where it's so important to see data and be under, able to understand, be close to your store staffs because that's where demand is happening and that's where you need to be very, very close. And data is the biggest key. You, on a daily basis, need to understand where are you missing out because that's going to impact your brand. Uh, a size miss out in a store is a brand impact. Okay? Uh, a trend missed out in a store is a brand impact. Uh, and I think that's operational efficiency where your customer is coming from a brand. Uh, whether we run our stores, how efficiently from a manpower, it does not matter to the customer. End of the day, I think uh, that's where a lot of, uh, and I, we work with IBM, we work with Stylomia, both, uh, and I think that's where data is driving this thing because no human can capture so much data uh, or use it. So I think it's an enabler, and I think a lot of organizations from a brand building perspective must look at how they will embed data as a part of their culture uh, because that's going to be relevant for a consumer from a brand perspective. All right, and last but not the least, uh, a quick rapid fire. Uh, and, and while I understand consistency is something that comes across, uh, but apart from consistency, look, the goal today is really reaching the right customer at the right time with the right experience. I mean, I, I can't think of anything else that you missed out on. We practically have to do all of them together and in the most optimal way. What each of you believe is the top success factor to brand building in reaching to that goal? Vineet, let's start with you. I think right product, right time, right value. I would just say that just put consumer at the center and do everything else in your business. Every discussion, just ask this person, am I doing the right thing for him or her? I, I think for me it would be availability and the choice of platforms for the customer. Okay. Adesh? Uh, to me, you know, uh, we must define the purpose. The purpose is the core of a brand. If you know the purpose, whether it is product, whether it is service, whether it's any kind of thing you want to do in any category, if the purpose is not met, and the purpose should be clear from top to bottom, and if that is not there, then maybe you have brands, but who don't know their purpose. So they are in the market without a purpose. So you need to define your purpose, and if you work towards the purpose continuously, you will continue to reach your goals. Rajesh? So I would say taking uh, Quality, consistency, and innovation as given, mm. the two most important factors for me would be availability and visibility. Okay. Uh, for me, it's um, staying relevant while staying true to your core. Okay. Steve? We would actually, I would actually say this is for us as a company mm. and for as we work with clients. It begins with getting to the basics with a customer design thinking. Okay. Wonderful. Great. We probably have quest, uh, time for, for a couple of questions. Anybody in the audience? Okay, excellent. That makes my life uh, a little easier. Anyway, thank you. A big round of applause for our uh, panel. And thank you for your time.